Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mesidia Post. My name is Alex Scott. And I am Travis Pfeiffer. And we have our final major element review for Opus 10, and that is for the water element. Uh, so we're pretty excited to get into this one. We've got a huge card right off the bat. Uh, so Travis, take it away. Why wait uh, till tomorrow? What you can reveal today, sir. All right, let's hit the ground running, or in this case, we'll hit the ocean swimming with our first card of water, which is our first water legend. This is Ash from Final Fantasy XII, Job Princess. She is a four-cost 8K forward. Ash is a, Ash has this as an ability. At the beginning of the attack phase, during each of your turns, select up to two of the following four actions. Draw one card, then discard one card from your hand. All the water forwards you control gain a thousand power until the end of the turn. Choose one character, activate it. Choose one forward of cost four or less. It loses all its abilities until the end of the turn. I really like the three cost Ash. Um, that's always been one of my favorite cards. I think she's really unique. I like the shenanigans she has. This card is great. I have hmm. seen it everywhere, and I mean everywhere at my local so far. Anyone who's even running water is running this card, and to great effect. If you're running this in mono water, you know, she's probably already going to be 9k from Waka. You hit that, all forwards gain 1,000. I mean, she's going to be 10k. Any of your water forwards are going up by 1,000. That's crazy. The draw card discard is really good. You can activate any of your characters, backups for, like, and then the blank is actually really helpful. Like, I was actually had a mirror match against a buddy the other night, and he had his Purim on the field. And so I would just keep blanking his Purim. So it's like, yeah, go ahead, block with it, because now it won't get you your summon back when it goes to the break zone. Like, it's rare that you have these multi-card effects um, where every single effect is useful. Um, kind of reminds me of Diabolos in that way. You know, all four of those effects can have an impact, and all four of these effects... The draw discard is a great way to cycle cards. Again, buffing up your whole field. They're all great. They're all really good. Like, I think this card's going to be a staple of definitely mono water. And I could even see this splashing into other water because um, there's only one of her effects that's specifically tied to water. You could easily just use the others. And any card like this, Ash, Wool, Maya, any card that has, you know, when your attack phase starts, you get to choose certain effects. I've always found those to just be so good and so relevant. Like, yeah, she's fantastic. And and, and, and look at the artwork. Like, man, looks mm -hmm. gorgeous. Can't, I can't say enough good things about this card. I've seen it everywhere, everywhere, and I've seen use it, loves it. Yeah. Ash. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> so I pulled this card in foil, uh, and it looks nice. amazing, but I traded it to JJG Fitness. Uh of the water lightning fame uh <laughs> but uh yeah no this card is great and it's an obvious shoe in for mono water fusuya just like our other oh, yeah. legend is also decent in that deck as well and uh I th yeah i think it's just got all around utility like wall you can just slot it in that's the hardest part about this card is figuring it out like how to tweak your deck to put it in because obviously it should be in the deck it's just what comes out because man is water a tight element right now in some water axes water. Oh, yeah, go ahead. i was gonna say water x it's gonna be easier to fit in but mono water that's tough yeah mono water is my second favorite deck to run and it's one of my favorite elements and yeah like even putting this in as good as it was i was like oh but what do i take out like all of these cards are good like there isn't a single like junk card in mono water so Okay, well, there's nothing like a common to follow up a legend. Uh, <laughs> so it's everyone's favorite new to branch, Exo Ray. Uh, so it's a 3 CP monster, uh, job new to branch. Put Exo Ray into the break zone, draw two cards, or damage five, put Exo Ray into the break zone, draw three cards. Aye. This is. Uh, <laughs> This card is really nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good in uh, in all uh, you know limited formats, uh, and it's not that bad in constructed either. It could. It's like a one card replacement for Layla Viking, but you don't get the forwards uh, with the upside of it being um, monster. It has monster synergy, and the damage five is really good. Um, that might be really appealing to some people to try to find. Uh, to try to get like more deck slots for for other things but 
Layla Viking also works really well with all of your uh, Kagnazo and like Leviathan and stuff. So I don't know. Overall, I don't think this card is is gonna push out a lot of things in mono water. Maybe in a monster deck, and uh, maybe maybe if people are testing. But overall, it's it's a really it's a really tight fit. That's yeah. gonna be the theme. Oh. That's gonna be the theme. Well, we won't say it every right. card. Yeah. No, no, that's a good point. Um, I think this definitely actually works better is, is in dual elements. Maybe like water fire. Uh, the random. Uh, there is a opus something fang that benefits from having 13 characters on the field mm. and this is category 13 so maybe if we're running that with water that would be a small benefit um again I, I like all these monsters that have you can just break them the second they hit the field if you need to however this one uh, tell me if i'm undervaluing the cp here alex but it almost feels like you absolutely want to break it on damage five. Like, I don't feel, feel like it feels nearly as good to break it without that. Oh, no, it's absolutely a loss on three CP, uh, but card cycle can make that worth it. Right. Um, but, uh, no, it's not a good, it's not a true value uh, because it, this isn't a card that you're going to just hang around with. When you play it, you're likely going to break it right away. There's right. very few situations where you're going to let it sit for too long, although it is safe, of course. Right. Um, so if, if you, uh, yeah, if you're playing this, I mean, it's, it's not really doing you that well because it's the first card you draw is replacing itself and the other card you draw is replacing the, the CP right. you spent for it. So that's where it's kind of a, a, like a one CP loss. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do we have next? Next we have Aria. Uh, version 3. She's a 2 cost backup. Job Cirrus. If you don't control any forwards, Aria 3 does not activate during your active phase. Uh, she has a action ability. You simply dull Aria. All the forwards you control gain a 1,000 power until the end of the turn. Um, I was lucky enough to pull a foil full art of this from my box. Mm. It's beautiful. I love this this artwork that a couple of these cards have from Metsuda. Like, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, she kind of reminds me of Leona Lewis, who sang the song My Hand for Final Fantasy thirteen. Random oh. connection, I know. Um, so I, I will I will say though, I've warmed up to this card a little bit, but I was actually really soggy on this card uh, when I first heard about it. Um, just because of that first effect that she will not activate, you know, if you don't have any forwards. And again, I was playing a buddy last night in Mono Water Mirror Match. And there were several turns he didn't get any value out of this because he didn't have any forwards on the field, so it just stayed dull and never came back for that CP usage. Um, that being said, its action ability is undeniably powerful, especially because it's not limited to a certain cost or element type. It's just every forward you have gets plus 1,000. This obviously has great synergy with the new Ash um, because she can reactivate a card, so you can, like, Aria, Ash reactivate, Aria again, and just make this massive, massive swing if you want to. So I see the potential of it. Again, maybe I'm just too much of a scaredy cat kind of player, but I just don't want something that's that unreliable for me. I would rather have a, like, I want to know my backups are coming back. Not that, oh, there's a chance that this backup I might not get to use it again. So that's how I see it. This card is devastating when it doesn't reactivate. It absolutely killed me in pre-release that way, uh, although the action ability is strong. I think it would be really fun to play this in a no-no deck, like the. Um, oh yeah. So every single time your for one of your forwards attacks, you keep like stacking the no-no effect in her trigger, and then uh, by the end of your turn, like you could have like a a really weak forward be boosted by three four k, and then mm. that would be fun. Uh, but I don't think, I think the risk is too heavy for it to be good. Okay, next up we have Elza, which is a 2CP uh, Sky Pirate 3K forward. It has EX Burst. When Elza dro uh, enters the field, if you control a job Sky Pirate forward, uh, draw one card. So if you're playing Sky Pirates, this is almost live the full game, uh, only in the early game where you maybe not be ready for it. So it just replaces itself, which is really great if you run Famfrit or if your opponent runs Famfrit or Veritas or something, then this is a great target. Uh, and just replacing itself with um, with a draw is also very good to keep your fuel going. It could be really good with uh, Spicillion or some others. If you're doing Sky Pirates and you're doing for going for some unblockable stuff, then that could be pretty neat too. Uh, so overall, it's a 
good card in Sky Pirates, maybe a one or two of. Yeah, uh, I, I saw this a lot in pre-release, and I faced a Sky Pirate deck recently, and they've all run this to very good effect. Uh, the only time I ever saw it miss was it hit into an EX burst once when they didn't have a forward on the field. But, I mean, to, to, to me, the EX burst is just a bonus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it replaces itself, and it's on a body, so you've got someone who can block or attack, which is really nice. I like the artwork. It's from Revenant Wings. So I don't know the character, but she seems very seductive and sexy, and like I like she's got really nice big red hair too which is awesome i like the big rose in her bonnet or her hat uh yeah it's just solid card and it, it does its job in sky pirates if this didn't have ex burst i would straight up just run starter ash over her yeah um because starter ash says job sky pirate so it could be a backup sky pirate as well yeah but this uh this ex burst kind of makes it a little bit better so i run actually run both right now uh okay awesome we've got a familiar summon coming up next all right, this is a one-cost summon. This is Kuchelane. This is the third Kuchelane we have received. Uh, this one's effect is choose one forward. Until the end of the turn, it loses a 1,000 power for each card in your hand. If its power has become zero or less by the previous effect, draw one card. Really like the artwork of this. Or a lot of Revenant Wings love. I'm just realizing how much love Revenant Wings got in this. Um... This is actually my least favorite of the Kuchelane, though. I was a big fan of the Opus 9 one that was 1 CP, blank something, it loses all of its abilities, and you draw a card. This one has potential, um, but first of all, you only draw, unlike that one, you only draw a card if it has to lose its power to this card's effect. And unlike the 4 CP Kuchelane, which... In big boards, I've seen that do like a 10k reduction if your opponent has enough dull forwards, and that one always draws you a card too. Um, this one technically can only max out, it, unless you've got some kind of weird drawing shenanigans, this one is only ever going to max out at, what, 6,000 power? Because you're going to have to play it from hand, so yeah. it's not going to count itself. Um, and then again, it, 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 yeah, it's a neat combat trick. It's a cheap combat trick if you just want their power reduction. But if you want the draw on top of it, it they're going to has to die to this. I actually saw a guy try to stack two of these, but he didn't realize when he stacked them both that, okay, but you just dumped your hand even more by playing it. So, like, you only reduce him by 2 or 3k. Um, and the other two Kuchelanes are both EX bursts, which I really appreciate. Right? I think the other one is... I know at least the four cost is, but I'm pretty sure yeah, the other one they are cost too, is Yeah, they're both. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this one isn't, so it's it's honestly not bad. I know I, I probably sound like I've just been crap on it. it. It's not a bad card. I just don't prefer it to the other two. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you there. I I would much rather play the other two, uh, and I have to apologize to my buddy David because he's running this one quite a bit. Uh, uh, I actually always think this card is ex burst, maybe because the other two are, and also if you look at the top right part of its uh, box there, that looks just, uh, yeah. yeah, it just makes me think it's there. Um, so you have to combo this with other power reduction. Um, so it does work really well in FF9 Firewater because Zidane is drawing you lots of cards and Freya uh, can drop power on entry and swing uh, to give this a little bit of combo potential. You play the second when something's already been power reduced and then this can reduce its power to zero and that's yeah. how you draw your card. Um, but overall, yeah, I'd rather have the other two Kukulins. I agree. Okay. Next up is Gilgamesh 11. So Gilgamesh 11 is a 6 CP, 9K forward job pirate. Job pirate is very relevant because our Pinello yeah, that boosts sky pirates also boosts pirates, and you need to have pirates or sky pirates in the field for her to work. Uh, so if you control five or more water characters, Gilgamesh 11 cannot be broken by opposing summons or abilities that don't deal damage. So that means Diabolos does not work on him. Any of your break a doll forward, break a forwards don't work on him. Uh, when Gilgamesh 11 attacks, choose one forward or cost two or less in your break zone played onto the field. So this is really neat in mono water because we're already playing Lena to bring back two CP targets. It's good in fire water nine because it brings back Zidane. Uh It's good in any element because it brings back any forward of any cost or sorry, of any element of cost two or less. Uh, so, this this card is really good. The built-in protection makes it because you have to invest in it. You have to run enough water uh, to do it. Uh, but I think that it's it's well worth it. And um, if you play some mono water and you have Waka, then 
this is not easy to, to ping off in other ways too. So it's very difficult to remove. So he's really set up quite well to make sure he gets his auto ability value. Um, and even if he doesn't, you probably invested quite a bit in getting rid of him. So I really like him as a build around card and I can't wait to test him out in other elements uh, besides fire water and, and model water. Um, yeah. That's... Hey, you had to face him yet? Oh, so much. Yeah, my yeah. my my main testing partner plays him in all his decks. He's uh it's like Ash, he's incredibly popular and he's he's just great. Like especially if you know a, a lot of these cards that have certain amount of characters, sometimes they'll say other than the card itself. This isn't other than Gilgamesh. He counts for himself. So other than him, you only need four other water characters. And, you know, a card this big, what does everyone instantly think of? Diabolos. This card gets protected from Diabolos. And I really enjoy effects that are when they attack. Because mm -hmm. some effects are like when they deal damage to your opponent. So this, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if they block, if they don't block. What The second he attacks, boom, Porum's coming back. Knight's coming back. Uh, Opposite Garnet's coming back. Opposite Zidane's coming back. And he has a lot. Not only is it a good effect, he has a lot of really great targets. Tar a lot of targets are already in Mono Water. And while I haven't done it myself yet or been the victim of it yet, thank goodness, my friend told me, he basically got the Famfrit cycle, where literally we would bring back Porum on attack, Famfrit, sack mm. the Porum, pull back the Famfrit, attack, bring back the Porum, Famfrit, pull back the Fam. You know, Porum goes, uh, it's just this absurd, just never, and you're just like, I couldn't do anything. Like, you know, he's just freaking Famfrit me every turn. Like, yeah, I hate that that happened to somebody. Yeah, yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, yeah, this guy's a beast. He's, I love six cost cards. I like high cost cards like this that again have kind of that built-in protection like he's he's a beast he if you have a way to answer him when he comes down do it because you do not want this guy to start swinging yes and that's something that i know this kind of sounds kind of silly uh -huh, but i kind of got stuck in i'm like oh i can remove the thing that he brought back and i did and then he just swung the next turn and brought the thing i removed back again so you can't even kill the thing that he's um bringing back because he literally can just continuously do that you have to deal with gilgamesh if you right. don't deal with gilgamesh it's often better not to kill the thing that he brought back because he might not have other targets um and if he does then you're really in trouble you just have to deal with him yeah um, i mentioned it as one of the plays bringing back opus 8 garnet which activates a ford when it enters so my buddy literally would swing with him bring her back activate gilgamesh so now he's a blocker too in, in as well as having swung through for an attack there was a, a recent water fire deck that ran Gilgamesh and uh, Zande from the new fire the new fire legend. Oh, that, really? It won the Ultros Cup uh, in RVA, uh, wow. which is pretty pretty neat, and that's a really fun list. So I would recommend looking that up on FF Decks if you haven't. Go. Cool. Okay, we've got another uh, beautiful portrait. Yes, uh, another card. I was lucky enough to pull a full art foil, and man, does she look good, man! She's gorgeous. Um, love the artwork. Another Matsuda artwork. This is three cost Sarah. She's a backup job princess. Really simple. The job warrior of light forge. You control gain a thousand power. I've already seen a couple people do like a job warrior of light designed around the new Refia and arc with this Sarah, and she seems really effective. Great artwork. Um, obviously, you have to build around her because it's pointless outside of having Warriors of Light. But yeah, she's really cool. And God, the artwork is so pretty. It's so pretty. Yeah, I think this is just a really good booster for Warrior of Lights, and I think they'll probably have to run it right. Like it's gonna if you're running water, yeah. then you're just you're just gonna run this card, and it's just it's a good card. It's good they put in the game. Yeah, good anthem. Okay. Next, we have G-Diver, uh, which is a 2CP 5K forward. When G-Diver is put into the field to the break zone, each player draws one card. So this is your typical mill effect because you like try to play this a bunch and make your opponent mill, and then they, it's another way to make them draw, uh, which you might see in other TCGs. In FFTCG, that doesn't work so well for you because cards they draw are resources, and they can play them out as much as they want, whereas in other TCGs, they might not be able to. So this card is not good. Wow, you almost made it sound positive there for a second, which I was about to be like, really? Because, yeah, this card's uh, terrible. This card's oh, yeah. absolute garbage. Um, there's so much stuff in water that just lets you draw. Why on earth would you want a card that also gives your opponent a card? Like, Yeah, no, he should. Uh... I, I don't know if it was like they were creating other water cards in this set. They're like, wow, we got some good water cards. Like, all right, we got to put something in there that just sucks. Like, yeah. yeah. 
No, I went, well, you, yeah, get, get rid of this card. You'd never use it. Yeah, yeah, unless like Mill becomes so good and this helps you push someone over the edge. Right. Yeah, yeah but otherwise, maybe, yeah. Maybe, but... Okay. Uh, how about the next one? All right. Next we have White Mage, two cost backup, standard unit. You can play multiple of them. Pay two water and tap. Uh, put White Mage into the break zone. Choose a water summon in your break zone. Add it to your hand. So this is just a water version of the Ice Black Mage as well as the Fire Black Mage. It kind of seems like they're trying to filter one into these into every element. Um, yeah, could definitely go really good in a certain water deck. It, I don't know if I would use it, honestly. Even mm. though I like it, because Porum exists, and Porum is already such a good way to get back a summon and on an EX burst, um, but, like, if you're making a Folka deck or just something where you really, really, really want your water summons, I could see doing this. But water also already has a lot of really good backups. Um, so out of the elements, I would say this probably has the least amount of value to water. But it's still, just like those other cards, very solid and very good for what it does. And now that we have Citra, I don't know why we'll play these. You can use... Yeah. You can put Citra in your deck and use your backup slots for other things. I did used to use Scholar, the Earth version of this, quite a bit back when um, it was the only one around, and you would use it to bring back Hecatons, and that was a really good late game. So it has that ability, like, in a late game situation, you're both grasping at straws, and you can recur that game-winning summon. So that's always decent, um, but now that we just have some really neat ways to do that. Okay, next up we have Cecil, which is a 2 CP uh, backup job paladin, um, and it has dull and put Cecil into the break zone. During this turn, uh, if a forward you control is dealt damage, reduce the damage by 2,000 instead. This happens for every instance that a forward is dealt damage during your turn, which is actually way better than when I initially read him. I, I thought he was yeah, worse than this. Um, so he's actually, like, that's actually a good effect. He obviously has a really bad name clash um, and he also has tough competition with a lot of really good water backups so I ultimately do not think this will see play where it is relevant is that it's a four backup uh, which means it activates category four um, abilities so in, uh, in a deck where you're running the opus 11 Rydia this will help get her effect online is that worth it probably not um, fun note, uh, this is probably the only full art that I would try to keep. If I find it, I'm going to keep it. Yeah. And I'm a guy that just traded a foil ash away. Like I'm, if I get, <laughs> if I get my hands on, on value cards, I immediately try to flip them for like 10 more cards. Uh, but this will be one card that I'll keep if I get in full art. Yeah, he's great art. Um, I originally completely wrote this card off when I first saw it, but it's actually grown on me quite a bit. Yes, it has a bad name clash with the other Cecils, but I'm currently t testing it in my mono water. Uh, I don't run a water Cecil in my mono water. And yeah, his effect, first of all, he's a 2CP backup, which is great. And then, you know, you just have to tap him and break him, which is nice. You don't have to. And you're right. I, I actually didn't read his effect correctly. I thought it was just reduce the next instance of damage you take to... No, it's for the rest of the turn. So it actually makes him a lot stick because if, they, if they're pinging you for any... It doesn't matter. Like, everything's getting reduced by 2,000. So it's a lot better. Um, yeah, I think I'm running him as a one-of right now. But okay. he's solid. If, if you're not name-clashing yeah. with Cecil, he's not a bad one to just throw in there. And like you said, it's surprising how much damage he's actually preventing for a turn. So Yeah, and a couple other niche things um you could use four cp ex burst rose to search him so that's searching yeah. a backup uh and he's yeah you know he's actually kind of neat against uh fina velfer combos to kind of throw off their board wipe yeah um okay you have five seconds to talk about this next card are you ready yep okay here you go it's a water version of the onion knight that was at least enough and get rid of it it's complete garbage <laughs> okay cool moving on i actually got my like fingers mixed up there too i was like wait i cut you down all the way to two it's because i was it's you know it's because i was looking at the camera of me doing it and oh, I, yeah. i'm like i oh, know i needed to look at my hands okay next up we have our pre-release promo card titus he is a 4 cp forward 8k um he is a job guardian which is good um and then his text reads, the category 10 forwards other than Titus you control gain 1,000 power. That's pretty neat. When Titus enters the field, you may return one backup you control to its owner's hand. When you do so, choose one forward, return it to its owner's hand. And he's also got a special, which is just one Titus 
it's called Quick Hit. Activate Titus, and uh, he gains 2,000 power till the end of turn. They really pushed this card. They gave him a bunch of stuff. Uh, so Job Guardian is really good, although we don't have any other new Job Guardians. So this doesn't really improve. It, it, it improves the Guardian deck. This is the Titus that you should play in a Guardian deck, but the deck itself hasn't got enough else to get better. Uh, but the that boost obviously is good in that context. Um, his ETB ability I think is phenomenal because you can return some uh, different water backups to your hand to get value from them again which is something that you might actually want to do uh, and then bouncing a forward is a really strong effect on a forward. An example of that is Raz who we'll talk about later who turned out to be better than people rated him for because when you do something when you package a card so this is Leviathan on a card uh, then that's pretty that's pretty powerful even if there are not very many good bounce targets these days it's a really strong um, response to then uh, like swing through with a bunch of forwards close out a game uh, and then a special is just really easy to threaten with so I think that's good too uh, he's a solid card, so I'm going to go on about this card for just a second. Uh, Final yeah. Fantasy X is my personal favorite Final Fantasy. Ooh, okay. uh, I love X. Um, yeah, this, that's my personal favorite. And Titus is one of my favorite characters. Love you, and I love the whole crew. I really would love to play a ten deck, but unfortunately, there's this isn't a very good one. And like, and, and I'm not talking about YRP because that's really more ten two in the Gull Wings. But like, I wish a good Titus, Orin, Kimari, a whole package. So. As much as it's nice, he's got that little text there. Like right now, that's not very relevant because there's just not a very good ten deck for that to matter. Maybe one day it will be. Um, I tested this guy out in my mono water, and after testing it, his enter the field ability is not as good as I originally thought. I mm -hmm. think you need to build around this card. Mm -hmm. My mono water deck has no backups with enter the field effects. I'm running, you know, Yuna, Waka, Scholar gladiator and so what i would do is i would enter him and i would like bounce my gladiator back to my hand to like bounce his forward out of the way but then it just okay well now i have to pay another two cp to put that gladiator back and he's not doing anything unless he's you know either on the field generating cp or breaking to get his effect so if, if you're running this titus you really want some kind of backup that has an into the field effect so you can trigger it, maybe like Lenora, which searches for Quorum, so you can trigger it multiple times, even if it's more expensive, because it felt really bad to bounce Gladiator, and then, oh, well, now i got to pay to put Gladiator back down again. And because Water doesn't have access to Haste, like, there were a couple situations where, like, the only target I had on his field was, like, a Quorum or a Layla or a Viking, and, you know, then he's like, okay, sure, I'll just play it down again, you know, for its effect. Um... So I, I, I think this will definitely be a lot stronger if you have your own backups that you want to play multiple times. Because just bouncing a backup like Yuna, like Gladiator, like Scholar, that you're then just going to have to pay for again, that didn't feel good. Um, that being said, of course, you know, the last minute bounce, it could be that swing play when they think they have more blockers than they do, and you come in and you bounce. And you're 100% right about quick hit. Quick, quick hit's great. I love any of the specials that you just pay the special. Boom, you can pop him up as a surprise blocker, and he's got more power than needed. Um, but yeah, I think you actually really want to want to play around the backups because otherwise that just and i played all three of them in a match so all three of my tetuses came down and every time i was like man i don't really like having to like hmm. pay for this gladiator again and if and now it's optional but if you're not doing that then what's kind of the point of this card like that's what he does so that's how yeah. i feel about him yeah you definitely have to be using his ability otherwise you shouldn't have him in your deck yeah um yeah, and maybe he's not supposed to be in mono water. I don't know. That's oh, a, oh yeah. well, that was yeah. the other thought. You know, yeah. he would be great in water fire. Yes, where you yeah. can bounce like VV or Ace or mm -hmm. one of those like cheap two costs. Yeah, I want to play this again so I can nuke the board. So yeah, I think he actually works much better as a splash in colors. Like fire was the first. I was like, oh yeah, if you played that two cost Ace over and over again, that would feel great. Yeah, that would very quickly get out of hand. And then you could also bounce things like. Uh, if you bounced Artemisian and just kept filtering yeah. your hand every turn, yeah. uh, if you bounce something like Gramps or Merrill Web uh, or Brawn or yeah, exactly like you yeah. said, the Searchers. So, so if you use this guy, some applications. Um, yeah, play backups that you want to replay. Yeah, I think I think Water Fire would be a very interesting 
place to test him and that is actually where the Guardians deck exists and his premium target might be something like Lulu because True. once you once yeah. you play Lulu she's stuck on the board but you do want to play her again you don't want to break her because she's a guardian but if you return her to your hand she's in your hand you can play her again so right. um, that might be a pretty cool deck okay awesome let's move on to another sky pirate all right, two cost backup to Maj. Been quite a bit of buzz around him for the Sky Pirate deck. Uh, he's a job Sky Pirate, of course. He has the action ability you can dull to Maj. Choose one forward. It loses a thousand power until the end of the turn. You can only use this ability if you control three or more job Sky Pirate forwards. So, as a two cost backup uh, Sky Pirate, he's great. And he also is water, which is nice because it kind of gives you that splash of water, which uh, the new Sky Pirates use. Um, his ability, I've honestly never seen anyone use it. I've said it's it, because it's forwards only. I've on it. It's been difficult for people to even get that. And it's, I don't know, like a thousand power. Yeah. It's power loss over damage, which is nice, but a thousand power to have three, four, that just seems like an awfully big requirement for not a very big effect. So, but again, honestly, you almost don't even care because he's a two cost water job sky pirate. And that's really what you want him out for. Yeah, um, I think they were pretty pretty um, stingy with his ability. They could have made it four job Sky Pirates mm -hmm. or three and not include himself. And then you'd have to run like him and Fran on your backup line and, and have two forwards out and then use ability because yeah. I've never been able to use his ability. I've never seen someone else use it. Uh, and it's just too hard to use. But being a water backup and being a Sky Pirate is all that he needs. He's searchable off the 4 CP Pinello, so you can color fix on turn one and play a Sky Pirate backup, which means once he's out, your 3 CP Starter Ash draws you a card on entry. Uh, and if you ever did get his ability off, the 3 CP Starter Ash could reactivate him and he could do it again. So there's some applications with him. He's just a solid backup for Sky Pirates, even yeah. without the action ability. So that's good. Oh, that's what it is. So I mentioned earlier, Water was one of my favorite, my second favorite deck. My favorite deck to run is Scions of the Seventh Dawn, and this guy is Cryl. Cryl, mm -hmm. I've never used her ability once, but you have her back there because she's yeah. a Scion job. Like, yeah. So same thing with him. Okay. Next up, we have Verena, which was the uh, Cards of Evilly spoiler, um, and. Uh, she is a backup, 3 CP, EX Burst, when Verena enters the field, search for one goblin or card name goblin and add it to your hand. So we do have a bunch of card name goblins, they're little monsters, there's a 1 CP earth monster, 1 CP fire monster, and uh, a couple 2 CP fire monsters, and our, there's also some job goblins like Buckaboo and the new fire monster we got this set, the 4 CP delight K to afford. So, there's actually like I think five or six goblins that this searches for. This is again a card that's only going to get better with more time. Right now, though, I don't think it's good. Uh, it's I mean a, an ex burst searcher is is going to be good at some point, but I don't think we need to search for any of the goblins that we currently have. Yeah, what uh, this really makes me want to play eleven because I'm like, wow, why is this lady tied to goblins? But yeah, you said until we get better goblins or that becomes like a deck archetype, I don't see how this is going to see play. Okay, so you have to go to the Cards of Evil East, uh spoiler article for this because okay. James Lockwood is an FF11 e uh, expert. I almost said EX first. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a long, long day. Okay, he's an expert and he goes over the, like, the lore of why she is... Uh, oh, okay. In, uh, why she's like... She's basically friend of friends of goblins in the game, but she's friends of friend of the beast tribes in general. So okay, yeah. Is, are there any? I don't know the goblin card. Are there any water goblins? Or are they all fire? Uh, there's fire, earth, ice. I think that's it, and lightning. So currently, this is literally an out of elem searcher. I I'm ninety ninety nine point four five eight percent sure. Huh. Yeah, that's weird. If that's the case, yeah. Huh. All right. Okay, let's talk about the legend. Ooh, Folka. Lady Folka. Ugh, beautiful Amano art. Another of the sworn six of Palladia. I recently uh, downloaded playing through Brave Expius because I had to know who all these characters <laughs> were. I was like, I gotta know. So Folka is a three cost, 7k forward. She has three action abilities. They all have the same cost. 
discard one water summon. So the first one, discard a water summon. Falka cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities this turn. Second one, discard one water summon. Choose one forward and one backup. Activate them. Final ability, discard one water summon. Choose one forward of cost four or less opponent controls. Return it to its owner's hand. You bet your ass that I want to try a Folka 20-plus summon water deck because, man, she seems so cool. Like, what what great design. I love that all of her effects are based off the same cost. So, again, you can just you can just filter into that and go, go, go. And all the effects are great, so she can instantly protect herself from something the moment she comes down. Um, choosing a forward and a backup to activate them, so you're getting both a protector and extra CP. That's great. And then that at any time, you could bounce them from their hand. None of these require her to be dull. So, I mean, the moment she hits the field, if you have to, you can just bop, 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 you know, throw out three summons. And, yeah, <laughs> wow, what a cool card. And that artwork, oh, oh, I want a full art so bad. She looks so good. Mm. The coloring is just gorgeous. Love it. Man, Water got some damn cool summons i have damn cool legends yeah i totally agree and i think that the all the amanos for the um uh sworn six of palladia are really good i like them a lot mm-hmm. um i think this card's good and i really like that second ability of choosing a forward and a backup and activate the activate activating them uh that activates mi- or fuso yeah <laughs> which is pretty relevant in water uh and that final ability is kind of a nice ability to close out a game you could uh, run this with Citra and just keep bringing back summons and uh, then, you know, use her abilities. I, I I mean, it's good to protect her if she's part of your game plan, but generally I'm not too worried about protecting a 3-cost 7k, uh, but it is handy if it, if it can foil, like, an ability, especially if it's a multi-target ability and you can make one of the targets... Um, ineligible that's fine i guess but uh yeah i think overall it's not as good as ash but it's still a very strong legend that's cool and i was thinking compared to like the Aerith in uh the wind whereas some of Aerith's costs required her to be dull because these are all just you know action abilities what i find interesting is that she is a threat at any time on your opponent's turn you know you can always threaten up am i gonna pop up a forward up am i gonna you know make something am i gonna bounce one of your own forwards that you can't even attack with like the fact that she's just always that threat that's really cool Mm -hmm. agreed okay next we have class fourth moogle uh if class fourth moogle is on the field it can produce fire cp and that's a two cp backup uh, job moogle which is always relevant um, so these we've talked about these cards and multiple other elements at this point, and they're just they're really really important for splashing elements. They're not so important for fifty fifty splits, and it's just a it's a good card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and water fire is already an element we know yeah. they work well together, especially in like the mine package. So yeah, it's solid. Yeah. So one thing I'll I'll mention. Uh, so for example, in water fire nine, the list that we've seen in the past they don't need this card because they're already balanced and they don't have color fixing issues. Yeah. However, this lets you run a primarily mono water version of nine, which gives you a lot of power that mono water brings to the table, but then gives you access to those fire cards that are really important for the synergy from nine. So like that's where this card can really shine in those types of situations. Absolutely. Okay. You've got another quick one. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yep. Class seventh Moogle. Uh, two costs, Moogle backup, colorless CP, tap it, choose a water forward you control, it gains a thousand power to the end of the turn. Just like all the other Moogles of this type, I believe every element has one now. No one's played them. I doubt anyone's going to play them. Goodbye. Okay. Now we have Lion, which is a 3 CP 7K forward job scout. Shout out Miles. Uh, <laughs> and it is uh, has a couple of abilities. Damage two when Lion is put from the field to the break zone, draw one card. I really like that ability. Uh, damage five, line gains a thousand power, and if she receives damage, it's reduced by a thousand instead. So it's kind of like a two K swing. Uh, that's yeah. also very very powerful. Um, so this is a three CP eight K with Waka, and then can just uh, you can just keep attacking with it, and then as soon as it dies, it draws you a card. I think that that damage two is actually good enough for this to to see some testing and, and possible play. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's very good to, with a Famfrit target. So it's, yeah, that's it's, true. Yeah, because you'd get your value back. It's very good against an opponent's Famfrit of Veritas. So I don't see why this wouldn't 
need to be tested more. I think it's a, I think it's a really cool card. Okay. Agreed. Also, one of the few eleven artworks I really like. Again, this is one of the better screenshots. I think. Yeah, I mean the last set, or was it last set or the one before? They had the Mobius art for her was really good too. Yeah, and that yeah. looked good too. Okay. Awesome. Moving on. All right. This is someone you alluded to earlier. This is Raz. He's a four cost eight K Sky Pirate forward. Uh, he's a dog or. Weird looking raccoon. I'm not quite sure what he is exactly. Uh, but, I would uh, like to believe yeah. he's a raccoon. Raccoon? Okay. We're going to believe he's a raccoon. So when Raz enters the field, choose one forward. If you control a job Sky Pirate forward other than Raz, return it to its owner's hand. Um, yeah, he obviously fits in with the Sky Pirate package. In particular, what I like about this is that you can choose either your own forward or your opponent's forward. So you can get a rid of a blocker that they have, or if you have something that you that has a good ETB that you really want to replay, um, you could use that. Like, you could potentially do a trigger with this with Titus. Uh, you know, come bounce, come bounce, come bounce. Um, but yeah, and then other than that, he's got a basic stat line of 4 CP, but 8K. Uh, yeah, so he seems really nice in the Sky Pirate package. He's oddly... The one Sky Pirate I haven't seen anyone really use against me. It's not because they don't have him. They have him. They either just never seem to draw him or, yeah, like, I guess they just don't get a bunch of other Sky Pirates down enough to use his effect. So I haven't really gotten to see him used much, but I know he's in those decks. Hmm. So what do you think? I think that he was probably, like, the the most down-talked Sky Pirate and then has become the best Sky Pirate or one of the better Sky Pirates because... Hmm. A 4 CP 8K body is really good on when you attach Leviathan to it with way less conditions than yeah. uh, Titus. It's so easy to fulfill her, his condition that it's basically always live and it's just a bounce on his ETB and you get a forward after. That is really strong. Like That is a, an incredible. All you need is that for them to have a good bounce target. Uh, right. without, it, without too strong an ETB. So I think that's why he's, he's really come through in the end and has become uh, like a two to three of in a de- probably I think probably a two of in a, in a Sky Pirate deck. Um, but yeah, I think he's I think he's really come around on a lot of people. I'm also going to add an additional two or three invisible points to his score just now because I also realize like there's no restriction on the forward. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be a certain cost. It doesn't have, you know, like Folk has had to be a four cost or less. Like, they could have an Arden out or a Veritas. So, yep, bye, pink. So yeah. Okay, awesome. So we've got Leviathan, uh, three CP EX burst summon. Draw two cards and put one from card from your hand onto the uh, top or bottom of your deck. So this is a super strong card with Fusoya because you can put. EX bursts on top of your deck. You can put extra Fusuyas on the bottom of your deck, and uh, but it's also just good with any sort of um, uh, like cycle where you might want a card later. Later, but it's so early on, it's pretty good. Um, although this is like it's kind of like Exo Rain that because you're not you're not getting a backup or a, a forward with this, um, it's a card. It, it replaces itself as a card and then has to draw you two but then you like you don't really net that much with it so it's a build around card you have to be wanting to use the advantage yeah. of, of put, placing a card somewhere uh but this is actually really vel- relevant because there's cards like vanille there's there's uh um i'm trying to think of there's there are like specific cards that want cards on top of your deck so now we actually have like an on-demand way to place a card on top of your deck which i don't know if we've ever had that we've been able to organize cards on top of your deck uh, but we've never been able to place one card from your hand on top of your deck. So I learned the hard way the other night in Mono Water. What you just said is 100% correct. You want to build around this. Because yeah. normally in my Mono Water deck, I run three of three summons. I run three Famfrit, three of the Opus 8 Leviathan, and three Bismarck. And I really love those because they're especially good combat tricks. Well, I, I swapped out the Bismarck to try this guy out. And while he feels good because he's an EX burst, there were times I also felt like kind of what you alluded to that I wasn't actually doing anything. It was like, well, yeah, I got 
two cards and then I'm putting one back and kind of thing. Um, it's nice that you can stack an EX burst if you want, or if you draw like a, a dead backup, you can just slot that under your deck, which is nice. Um, in particular, his wording I really appreciate because there are some cards that like when you draw them, you have to pick from the cards you drew. But no, this one you just add it to your full hand and then you pick anything you want out of your hand. So like one of the times it felt good to use him as I had already had my backup Yuna down and I had another copy in hand. So I just drew two cards and I just slipped the Yuna under the deck. Um, so that felt really good. Yeah, he's really, he, he's fun. He's good. I, I, but I, I do agree that I think he'll be even stronger if you kind of build around him or plan around him. Well, I mean, if you look at Moogle and, and Poo Poo as cards, those are one CP cards that do the same thing, but they put a card in the break zone instead of into right. your deck. So this is a two CP cost increase on those other summons that already do the same thing. So you shouldn't run them unless you really m need that card in your back in your deck. Yeah. Okay, why don't you bring it home? All right. Finally, we have uh, someone who is a major pain in my butt during pre-release and any time I face Sky Pirates, and that is Rickon. Rickon is a three-cost, 7K forward, job Sky Pirate, of course. At the beginning of your attack phase, during each of your turns, all the job Sky Pirate forwards, other than Rickon you control, gain 2,000 power until the end of the turn. Uh, this is the reason I... Didn't go 3-0 and in my pre-release because my opponent was playing a Sky Pirate deck. Got this guy out early with Philo. And again, Philo was coming in at me as a hasted 8k forward all of a sudden for two costs, which was like, whoa! Like, when they get all their Sky Pirates out and Rickon's on the field, it's kind of scary how, how much power they just ramp up to. Just for, again, the attack phase starting. So again, it doesn't matter what I do to them. It doesn't matter what I counter with summons or block or any of that stuff. They're they're getting that power as soon as the attack phase starts. So every time he's come out on the field, I've been like, oh, man. The only good thing is that because he doesn't power himself up, it, it, he is an easier target for me to get rid of. But, yeah, he synergizes with the other Sky Pirates so well. So he's good. He's really good. Yeah, I'm I'm not as big on him, and I think that he's definitely an inclusion in a Sky Pirate deck. It just depends on how you're building it. I've used Sky Pirates as a aggro deck that wants to get around people, and power doesn't necessarily have to be part of that. It can be more unblockable and and uh, bounce and other things, power reduction. Uh, but he certainly can't hurt in the deck. Uh, I just don't think that he's like a a two or three of. He's he's more of a one to two of, depending on really? what you're doing. Hmm. Yeah. But then again, I'll have to have to play more Sky Pirates to find out. I think Sky Pirates are a little bit short constructed wise in general but um yeah we'll find out soon interesting hmm. all right so what do we have to do before we go uh talk about water baby yeah so i think that water got a ton of mono water fusilier cards it's insane they got ash Volka, uh leviathan uh and just like all really good for specifically for that deck um we also saw Gilgamesh, which is a really good card. And then Sky Pirates got a whole new water edition, yeah. um, which is pretty neat. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, water got some great stuff to set. Uh, some really cool backups. In Cecil, uh, even though I don't really like her, Aria, Sarah are fun. Um, the new Moogle got some good Sky Pirates love. Water by far got the best legends as, mm. as far as like as a set, like as far as like which element got the best legends for both slots definitely water um some of the other elements probably have cooler legends like as a one of but then their other legend was always kind of like eh, maybe not so much whereas both ash and Falka are really awesome um and similar to earth with black tortoise the sea like when you get a really great forward outside of the legends and this definitely has it in gilgamesh like he's he's a game changer like he's a beast yeah mm -hmm. water got some good stuff like I'm looking over it, and there's not other other than the generic like you know Onion Knight and maybe the and the G Diver. Uh, other than that, like Water has solid stuff. Very mm -hmm. very they did a very good job with Water. And don't forget, Water got a Nuda branch. It did get a Nuda branch. Now, do you want to yeah. uh, extrapolate on what that is exactly? Uh, yeah. Well, you or know do you what? just like the word. <laughs> Well, it's just like a it's like a sea creature, and I'm I'm totally blanking on 
I'm a, and I I want to say on the record that I'm a biology teacher and I'm blanking on <laughs> uh, and on like a real life example of a new branch, but oh, I um, put him on the spot. Sorry. But no, but that is like a, a type of sea creature that you would find in in uh, on the sea floor. Okay. Which I have to give a shout out to Midgar Blog because he always points this out when a new job comes out. Or no, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's all the jobs. It's all the Bart's has all the jobs, right? Yes. So now Bart is also a new to branch. Okay, so new to branches are a widespread and successful groups of marine gastropod mollusks. Okay, so there's a ton of species. They're really cool. Google it. There's actually like light up ones. There's glow in the dark ones. They're pretty neat. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. Hey, if you haven't, uh, if we're gonna pl- let's plug a Midgard blog right now. He's doing oh, his absolutely. own set reviews and their tech set reviews, and uh, I love reading his set reviews. Yeah, um, likewise, he's a great writer. Yeah, so he's one of my favorite. Well, probably my favorite blogger to go to go read. So uh, go check his site out. Um, and then when you're done checking out his site, come back to, to our site on the Mesidia post and, and check that out Absolutely. too. Yeah. 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 Guys, seriously, like I, I know we're not done and we got one more light dark wrap up, but you know, Alex works really hard and he goes out of his way to put a lot of really good content on his site, including covering uh, big tournament results. I'm sure he's going to cover worlds after it finishes up this weekend. And it was one of the reasons I got attracted to his site in the first place was he's one of the few people's co- uh, commenting on that, but he works really hard. And he's a great guy. I have nothing but appreciation Aww. and gratitude for him letting me be a part of this. Thanks, man. Uh, you know, it's been it's been absolutely. It sounds like it's the last episode. And it's not. Uh, right, but it's, yeah. been, it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure having you on so far. Thank okay. You. Awesome. So that's been it for us uh, from the Mesidia Post. And my name is Alex Scott. And I am Travis Pfeiffer. Uh, and we'll see you next time for light, dark, and maybe something else. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. You can like and subscribe to support us further, and you can read the Mesidia Post articles at themesidiapost.com. You can also check out our Patreon uh, if you want to support us more. And if you need FFTCG singles, then look no further than Cards of Evilise. They've got great deals and prices. Check them out. Finally, I'd like to thank FF Decks for creating the best website for creating your Final Fantasy trading card game decks. They've also got a Patreon, so make sure you go check them out. They work so hard for the community, so let's pay them back. See you next time.